Ah yes, cavalry. The strongest and most crucial unit in Divided Impera. And probably also the one I'm least qualified to talk about due to my own limited skills and past history. Just like with the skirmish video, we aren't gonna go into too much detail about the stats as it varies from unit to unit. Especially with cavalry as there are so many variations and differences depending on what part of the world a faction resides. Instead we will refer to an average number or something. Nevertheless we'll do our best starting with melee cavalry. If you want a reliable unit with the ability to deal with enemy cavalry, hunt down skirmishers with relative ease and have a good rear charge bonus, these guys are for you. Compared to other types of cavalry, melee cavalry have excellent defense giving them more survivability. Depending on what quality unit you are using, their attack and weapon damage can even be equally as good if not better. On a few occasions, they even come with a single volley of javelins allowing them to be thrown right before a struggle with an enemy unit to give you the edge. Depending on how heavy they are, their role for you is very different. Starting from the very top, the heavy melee cavalry, and typically also the expensive ones, are best suited to be the first in combat. With more armor than the others, and most likely also better defense, they can pin down enemy cavalry, while your lighter units such as spears, skirmishers or light cavalry run around to finish the kill. And as referred to here, the lighter cavalry is better suited for a form of support unit for different engagements around the field. They're typically very fast, giving them the opportunity to assist your lines where they are needed the most. Furthermore, they will have the easiest time taking down skirmishers, as their speed allows them to close the gap between them and their target in a short amount of time. The medium cavalry is like a mix of both. The most reliable of this already extremely flexible cavalry type, basically. The best way I can describe melee cavalry really is that they have a great baseline which makes them reliable for most fights. Right before moving on, I would like to add that it would make the most sense to deploy them on their flanks as this allows them to take advantage of as much space as possible. Either that or right behind your skirmishers so you can react to your opponent's movement. On the other side of that spectrum, with probably the worst baseline in the game, but also the highest potential, we have Shock Cavalry. The bane of many battles, these units can be the one piece that turns a crushing defeat into a heroic victory. Let's take the infamous late Iranian cataphracts as an example. Extremely expensive and slow, with just an average melee attack and defense, they can be taken down if left dormant for long enough. However, due to their extreme selling point in their charge bonus, they can absolutely obliterate anything they charge into. Their excellent armor makes them more resistant to skirmishers than average. However, this doesn't change the fact that you should always try to avoid it. It's probably every commander's wet dream to witness a proper rear charge from a shock cavalry unit. But with that lack of speed, this can be challenging for some. Again, there are always exceptions to what I'm saying with the Sicilian cavalry, both being extremely fast and having great mass. As shock cavalry are some of the most lethal units on the field, it also means they have a major target on their back. If placed on the flanks, they might be close to the enemy rear, but are also extremely vulnerable to enemy cavalry or skirmishers. The only real exception to this is the shock cavalry with an IC and breed horse as they can beat pretty much anything in a one-on-one. -on -one. The late Iranian cataphracts again is a great example of this. Oh and if you don't understand the whole breeds thing, don't worry, we'll talk about that later in the video. But overall I would always recommend putting shock cavalry in behind your own lines. After all they are still on horseback, allowing them to still get around the enemy flanks once it is safe. Back here they should be protected from spears or other cavalry. Maybe not slingers, but you can always just pull them out of the line of fire if needed. Furthermore, as long as the opponent isn't using a spear front line, and you don't care too much about casualties, you can always perform a massive frontal charge. However, I only recommend doing this with shock cavalry, as they have a lot of mass. Now, there is no exact stat to interpret this from, but the slower and more armored and better charge bonus, the better mass. Ish. Don't hold me accountable for that though. Someone would probably explain it in the comments. If you aren't afraid of some extra micromanagement, then the Javelin Cavalry or Javcav might be for you. 
Usually, they have a slightly higher speed compared to their melee counterparts. They basically act like a faster Peltas unit, but with fewer men as their downside. Being efficient with such a unit is more skill based than the rest, as they can act as an assassin for your tactic. If your opponent is bringing elephants, shock cavalry or maybe some elite shock infantry, you can use Shavkev to drain them down or just weaken them enough to be less effective against your infantry. Maybe he has left his skirmishers vulnerable for you to take out, so that could be an option too. Now don't get fooled by their stats, for some factions their melee defense and attack might seem to be on par with regular melee cavalry. But due to their smaller units and the lack of a bonus versus cavalry and possibly an inferior charge bonus, they will most likely just get destroyed instead. So try to stay out of melee unless necessary. There's also the option for you to use them as a form of scout. You can deploy them ahead of your army so they can run forward and reveal all your opponent's units. It doesn't really need to be a Jeff Cap unit, but as they are faster than average and often operate independently from your main formation, it makes a lot of sense for it to be these lads. Now to probably the most broken unit in the entire game. You don't need more than 6 horse archers to take out an AI army. It requires a ton of micromanagement, but this is so powerful. Don't forget you can actually bring way more than just 6 horse archers into an army making it way stronger than that. These lads here are basically the reason why many have a rule of just 4 cavalry units per army. They can just run around on the edge of the enemy formation, chipping away the enemy units. Plus the more expensive variants also often wield a decent weapon to make them excellent for rear charges or allow them to perform hit and run attacks on exposed units. Luckily they have two main weaknesses, although cavalry in general is very expensive the good horse archer units are even more extreme in that regard, forcing the player to choose between quality infantry or cavalry. And just like the other cavalry units, they are extremely vulnerable to slingers, as their superior range allows them to melt the horse archers before becoming cost effective. I feel like there's more I would like to say here but I simply can't remember. So let's just move on to the camels. We won't cover too much here as they are basically the same as the other horse cavalry units. However there is this main difference in camels having the scare horses ability, allowing them to more often than not win those engagements. But there isn't really a lot of them in the game, It's I think it's like Nabatea, Saba and Parthia, they are the only three factions with camels. Then there are also like the area of recruitment units from the grand campaign. But that's also about it. As promised, I also want to talk about the four different horse breeds in the game. We can't really say too much because all the specific stats they are covered up. But we know the following and thank you to Svaraj for helping me figure this out. We have first the Mario Pos, they are the horses from Gaul. And they, have, they are larger horses that has a focus on mass. And they are available to Averni, the Nervii and also the Romans because of their auxiliary cavalry. There is also the Nicaean Breach which is the largest and strongest of all the cavalry. With a greater focus on mass and are superior to the Mario Pos. They are available to Bactria, Atropat Khan, Parthia and the Seleucids. It's not all of the cavalry that has this ability of course, or this that, this breed horse. But the few that does. They are typically also on the high end of things. The Numidian cavalry, they have great speed and agility, giving great endurance as well and they have the ability to ignore heavy terrain. They are of course available to Carthage, Mercedes and Rome. And we also probably know how effective Numidian cavalry are. Especially if you know a bit of history, during the second Punic War for example. And lastly we also have the Caesarlian cavalry. They are light and fast but they hit like a heavy horse. They are of course available to all the Diadochi, most of them, Epirus, Macedon, Egypt and the Seleucids. And lastly I also asked my friends over on Discord about what they thought to be the best cavalry in the game. And we've come up with these units to look out for, not in any particular order. The notable cavalry units are Numidian cavalry in general all of them, the Cataphracts of all. Remy Cavalry from the Nervii, as they're such a strong melee cavalry. 
The Dacian bodyguard cavalry because of their long range and fast speed plus heavy armor. And of course, the camel cataphracts, the only truly strong camel unit for the Parthians. And I think that's all from me for today, so until the next time everyone, goodbye.